Hey, welcome back to We Have No Idea What The Heck We're Doing Garage, aka American Made Classics. And today we're going to try something, well, I don't think Smiley and I have ever done. And that is we're going to try to put in a, uh, I think people call this a lunchbox locker or... It's basically, uh, it's a... Uh, it, it replaces the spider gears. It just replaces the spider gears. It's and locks, very simple... locks the axles into each other 100% well, I mean, of the time for the most I mean, part. I, I know what it does in a nutshell, well, but I'm trying to think of what the exact terminology is. Because mainly we're not going to use it probably for what it's intended for, and that's for off-roading in a Jeep in an AMC 20 rear axle. We're going to try to put this in my AMC Hornet with the AMC 20 and see if it can lock the tires up and spin them together at the same time. That's... Well, in a nutshell, drag racing you need you need traction, right? And one tire fire can only get you do so far. Yep. So for a measly five hundred and some odd dollars, we got this uh, Power Tracks no slip uh, part number nine two zero one two zero two nine. Your head's in the zero, way. Zero. My head's in the way. There we go. Ian, this you know, is I the a big head. You know, I'm sorry. This alone is worth five hundred dollars. The sticker because that'll That's add about somewhere. That'll add about thirty horsepower. Yep. So we're basically going to struggle through this and hopefully you get some entertainment value out of it and I hope you don't learn something because that would be cruel. Um, but we're going to try to install this. This is obviously just the locker part here. Yep, and then you and got the new got cross the pin. the new cross pin and probably some springs that we have to read the instructions, but we're probably not going to do that. And then some other miscellaneous things to help with the install. So what was recommended to me was this uh, Redline 75W Performance... Uh, 75 what? weight gear oil. I know, 7590, but whatever. It's full synthetic. Yep. And of course, they recommended their additive for the their differential. And essentially, what we got going on here is we're going to put this in the rear axle. So, what we did to help us out, you know, they sell these at your good old O'Reilly's or, you know, whatever chain store, parts store. They come in a thing like this, but they don't obviously fit on this bottle. So, what, what I did is I had this empty one, you know, this is a, what it normally is. It normally come in bottles like this for your gear oil. That was basically empty. I just emptied the rest of it out in another jug and I emptied this bottle into there with the, uh, the modifier right into there. So now we can actually use this to fill our differential when we get that far. So we got that and then this is what we're going to use to seal the, the rear pumpkin, the rear diff. That is, when we're done. in my opinion, one of the best gasket makers there is. According to Smiley, that's the holy grail. So we better use that. And we got ourselves some good old brake cleaner. So when we get that all tore apart inside there, we'll spray it all down, clean it up real nice. We'll do the re the full rebuild. That's, yeah, you know, the- The rebuild in a can. The brake clean rebuild. So I hope this is all we need. I don't think there should be anything else. It's just the hard part is just gonna be figuring out exactly how that goes together. And well, as long as you don't break anything. We'll probably break something. Yeah. So hopefully it's just the the bolt breaking this. We'll just we'll just say that. For right. the people that don't know, what is the AMC Model 20 rear axle? They came in on most of the Jeeps and the cars, correct? Yeah, Gremlins, uh, Javelins, AMXs. Uh, I mean, this here is a one wheel peel. It's the the Yolo model. That you only left one. And and I'll, your years and years of ownership of this car, I've only told him to get a locker for the rear for. 95% of those years. Yeah, and I don't feel like trying to space it and shim it and everything. So we're just going to try to go the, the easiest way possible, which isn't necessarily the cheapest. But still 500 bucks for that power tracks. But And I don't know if it's supposed to be rated for drag racing. Probably not. Well, I mean, if we had... It's probably going to click and make noises. It's going to be just great. But Yeah, I mean, it, we're gonna if, find if out. you're going to be running a car on the street... Like 95% on the street and maybe going to a track day once or twice a year. Um, probably recommend, that's my shirt. Oh. And yes, I have a shirt on get, for those get, wondering. Get, getting hot in here, huh? Oh, I wore that here yesterday and put my crappy shirt on here. Okay, never mind that. Keep talking. <laughs> this just made it awkward. Well, anyway, uh, I wouldn't probably not recommend, or I wouldn't recommend getting this style locker because I've seen people that have been driving on the street. Yeah, don't, don't, yeah, don't do what we do. Um, just, well, no, I've don't. seen someone... That uh, should really rename nameless <coughs> Freiburger uh, on the muscle, the roadkill muscle truck. He ran it for years in the back of that, and it actually twisted the splines on the end of his axles. Oh. In a roadkill garage, they tore it apart, and they saw that they ran it. And I don't think this thing quite has the 
power and uh, to twist the axle shafts, but we'll see. Well, one thing this thing also specifically says is it's for a 29 spline axle. I have no idea what my Hornet has. I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> so I think I don't think they make another one, but I could be wrong. So then the first thing we do once we get the an axle shaft pulled out, let's pull it out all the way because we were originally just going to pull it out a couple inches. Let's pull a shaft out all the way and just confirm that it's the right spline count. Yep. Just so we don't get this kind of semi put together and then like, oh crap, we need to get the correct part. And then, if, well, if it's not the right spline count, I don't even think it'll go inside that. Well, no. No, it would, it would never go inside the... Uh, uh part here so that's why we'll figure we'll we'll test that first just to see yeah i mean well i do i do think we should unfortunately read the manual to make sure we get these springs in correct yeah i'm not sure what they'd be for and unless does this i wonder is this not fully engaged all the time no it's not it's, oh it's not all it's not it's not oh, so a, it's, it's not, not a mini spool oh so, okay so then there is a difference there. Take back everything I just said. Well, for crying out loud, you're trying to mis misguide the people. Yeah. What do you think we are here? Hacks. All right. Yeah. So we're going to try to struggle through it, and hopefully you don't learn anything. All right. So I've got the back of the car jacked up. Went ahead and did that off camera. Only thing I did is I took the jack, jacked it up by the pumpkin. And I got my medium sized jack stands, which are like six ton rated. So they're just a little bit taller. And I put them on the frame rail of the car. That way, instead of the axle tube, therefore I would, I would get a little bit more space by having the weight of the axle on the leaf springs. And it came down quite a few inches. So now I have a little bit more clearance. Um, up on you know up here because otherwise the gas tank would kind of protrude get in the way of uh <clears throat> trying to do things so figured that might help in the long run so what we're going to do now got my trusty drain pan here and undo the bolts and let it start draining and then while well, undo the bolts on the diff cover i mean specifically and uh, get the diff cover, you know, started to come off. And as it's draining out of there and dripping, that's when I'll take the uh, tires off. And we'll go from there. So I'm going to get that diff cover taken off. Here we go. All right. Let's get started here. And these are going to be uh, a half inch size socket. I'm just going to, I mean, essentially, I'm going to leave the top one bolt in but I'm gonna take all the other ones out and therefore I can just kind of flip open the bottom a little bit and have her start draining when we get that far so start over here okay now that I got the uh, bolts out I have two partially loose partially out up on the top like I said before and uh so this one actually has a pretty decent seal on it even without any bolts in it I'm going to try my best to get somewhere around the bottom to kind of just start opening her up with a, just a good old-fashioned screwdriver and a hammer and hopefully it'll start cracking open. A couple of love taps. I don't know, this screwdriver isn't the best, but it's my hammering screwdriver, I call it. One that I don't give a crap about if it gets mutilated. But it might not, it might not be a thin enough blade. Beat to hell. Oh, this is on there. As soon as I crack it, I'm be wishing I had that closer. Might have to get a better screwdriver. As much as I hate to say it. Coming now. Okay, so we got her started. There we go. That she's pretty clean. Now, I'm not sure when this was last serviced, if at all. 
So oh yeah, that's that's pretty clean. Surprising. So, smells like gear oil. Looks like gear oil. So that was pretty straightforward. So as this is continuing to drip, we'll get the tires taken off and uh, see where we're at after that. Get these pop two bolts taken out. Of course, they're going to put up a fight. Well, no big chunks. Well, this definitely had a gasket on it. I'm hoping we can just use some. As long as it ain't... Uh... Oh, it is. That's weird. That's a nice. I mean, I've never had one of these apart before. I've never had a reason to. So yeah, there it does take a gasket. Is it on only on the inside lip? Yeah. So do you, do you think we can make our own gasket with the right stuff? I wonder. No, that's too big of a step. So I'm probably gonna have to order that some bitch. Well, you don't think a part store would have one? No, not in stock. I doubt it. No, we don't. See, so, you know, I'm used to my jeeps. Why not taking my jeeps apart? You know, you just you can just make a gasket all day long. Yep. And here we'll show them what we're talking about here is there's a little lip on the inside where it takes a gasket, which we didn't know. We thought it was flat like most of the differentials. So I will, shows you how much we've been inside one of these. We'll do some calling. I, I will quick just to see if there is one. I'll run and grab it. But All right. Now that I got the differential cover taken off, uh, what I'm going to do since I'm here right now is going to get out my cordless drill with a wire wheel attachment and I'm just going to clean the uh, outside uh, edges where the uh, silicone and stuff like that was uh, in hopes that I don't you know I don't I don't want to clean the I don't want to clean everything in here prematurely I'd like to clean all this gasket off and clean the surface because it's going to create some debris I'd rather it not get inside there so after I clean it or uh, you know clean the, the mating surfaces then I'll come in here with some brake clean and clean the inside, make sure it's all nice and, well, clean. So, let's do that. All right, after uh, using the wire wheel attachment, I got this pretty well cleaned up all the way around and I'm pretty satisfied with that it should clean up pretty well so I will use some brake cleaner and properly and thoroughly flush it off That is some strong stuff. <coughs> One thing I've, I've noticed now after doing that, got a nice little pool of uh, of brake brake fluid, brake or brake juice, brake cleaner juice. So it'll probably be a good idea to just make sure all that's out of there. This stuff should evaporate, but I'm just gonna make sure it's still taken out of there. Just kind of wipe up a little bit. <laughs> So after a little bit of research, uh, unfortunately we believe we have to remove the entire carrier from the axle in order to get the locker installed. So um, I guess we're going to just, we're, we're kind of winging it right now. We have to remove the entire hub assembly and on each side pull the axles out a little bit because they're one all they're one piece with the hub and everything. Hopefully you don't have to remove the uh, brakes and the backing plates. I'm not quite sure. Uh, the one interesting thing that he pointed out is on a normal open differential, you would have a bolt right here that retains the cross pin. On this AMC 20, it's like a big roll pin that gets driven through and out the backside. And I guess it looks like it would be possible to do it in the car, but it looks like it'd be a total pain in the butt. And then also, I gotta turn a tire here. You can kind of see 
the weird setup they got there. But Rob consulted his uh, AMC tech service manuals, so we kind of know what the uh, what we are expecting and what we need to do. But first step is to remove the tires. Yep. Well, it looks like at one time this would have had bolts holding it on. Yeah, and that's actually what my manual says they're supposed to be bolts holding this on, but I guess they don't they didn't want the bolts. That might be why there's one broken off right there. Probably said the, the heck with that. And if we're pulling the axles out, would you want to just do the seals now or it's a good question. And I think this has to come off too. That's a nut. Hey, it's Rob here. It's the next day now. Uh, essentially, uh, stopped yesterday after we kind of got to the point where we're like, man, maybe we need to do a little bit more research before we go a little further. Uh, mainly because Smiley and I have never, I mean, I love AMC cars, but I've never had any reason to go into an AMC 20 rear end. So uh, I got out my technical service manual. Uh, I went online, you know, thank goodness these axles are popular with Jeep enthusiasts, you know, which is still part of the AMC crowd. So hats off to them. But I needed to get some more information. I needed to see more things. Uh, realize exactly what I'm looking at, what I'm doing. Um, I couldn't, f and uh, nobody has that I have found put one of these in an AMC that I that that someone has documented. So this is new. You know, they they put in the power tracks. I think it's called lock right, and this is the no slip. So this one's even a little bit a little bit different than. The lock right, which is just a basic locker. This one actually, um, it's actually quieter. It's designed to allow you a little bit more leeway so you can turn the wheels a little bit further before it'll start to lock. Um, so it kind of gives you a little more leeway around corners and so forth. So anyway, like I said, this is a little bit of different. Springs are installed differently. It's kind of put together differently, acts differently. So um, essentially last night and today I've been researching uh, power tracks you know the actual no slip differential itself um, inside of the box where did I put the box they don't give you an installation manual at all the only thing they give you is a user manual which is useless I'll also throw that right in the trash so I did end up finding the installation manual and that you can you can obtain that online right from power tracks website so i'm not sure why they wouldn't send it physically with their 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 product and why they'd want to make you go and try to find it online it just seems weird to me but it is available online and you're probably going to need it if you're going to put this in absolutely well, not probably you will it's just something you're going to want to study because you know what i'm doing here probably not going to be exactly what you're going to have running run into you know if you're working on a cj or, or you know whatever you know it's a javelin you know whatever um things could be a little different you could have a different uh, ring and pinion setup your uh, ring gear potentially could be wider than what came from the factory and i actually saw this on someone's video they had put a different ring and pinion in for a higher gear or lower gear or taller, whatever, um, for the, their mud mud machine or rock crawler. And that pinion, or I'm, I'm sorry, the, get my terminology mixed up here. The ring gear was actually just a hair thicker. And then when they tried to get the cross shaft, the cross pin out, it was hitting on that ring gear. So, I mean, I'm telling you, it could be... It could be all from all over the place. You don't know what you're going to run into. I looked at mine, and I don't think I'm going to have that problem. So 
basically what I'm telling you is things are going to get interesting. Uh, I've never done this before, as I said before. We're going to just try this out based on the information that I have just obtained. And I'm feeling kind of confident in it. I'm, I think I'll be just fine. So we're going to go with that. All right, so based on the newly acquired information that I have gathered, according to um, a Jeep enthusiast who installed a lock right, which is, like I said, the brother of this, he said you can just have you just have to remove the driver's side axle and how these axles come out they, they actually like the backing plate has to come off um it's a two-piece axle so like you take this you don't you, like here well here's the thing normally you would take this nut off you know and you, you could take off this here and then you would get like a bearing puller and then you would slide the axle out that way but I don't think you have to. I think I can cheat and shortcut around that. I'm going to try to leave all the brakes together. I'm not, I'm not even going to try to take them apart. I'm not going to take the hub off. I'm going to leave this nut alone. I think if I can just measle my way. Weasel? Measle? Eh, whatever. You get the idea. On these backing plate bolts. So there's four total. Two on this side and two on that side. I think I think that's all a guy needs to do is to just back those out, take the bolts off, and then maybe give a slight tap on the backing plate back here. Who knows, maybe it'll just pull right off. And slide the axle out and the brake assembly all as a unit. I think that should give us enough room to do our carrier work. So I went ahead already and I broke loose this brake line geez, for the driver's side uh, wheel cylinder. Um, all I did was I, I heated it up. Now, I mean, if you have enough slack in your lines, I probably actually did. I see there is some lack, but I still wanted to try to get it to get it off. I didn't want to be limited just in case. So anyway, like I said, I read on on that guy's post that you could just remove the driver's side. Well, I read in let's see the Power Tracks manual, and actually it specifically says the passenger side. So I guess we'll find out what happens here. I already removed this, and believe me, that was a bear. That was quite the pain. So we're going to try to go with uh, the driver's side since I have, held, uh, I have already started that method. So that's off. And now you can see on the back here, it's plain. Uh, another thing is if your my emergency brake cables are not hooked up, they were cut by not by me. But honestly, I don't think those would matter. If you're just going to slide the axle tube out ever so slightly just so you know it comes out, out of the Okay, I've got a 916 on my ratchet and a 916 combination. Um, I might need to use heat. These don't look too bad. I, I might be able to break them free just by brute strength, but it might not be the same in your case. So I'm going to put this on opposite directions. All right, my wrench is slipping. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, I am going to need to use some heat because it's on there pretty good. Okay, now that I got her decently hot, I'll try that again. I might have just cooked my, my seal.
Okay. We got her broke free. So as you can see here, I accidentally knocked off my adjusting bracket here. So I'm going to just try to put that back on. And of course, it's really freaking hot too, so it does not feel the greatest at all. All right, I got that back on. What I had accidentally knocked off was this uh, bottom spring right here. And that was what connected to right there as part of the adjusting mechanism. So, got that put back on. That was kind of in a crappy spot to get at that nut right there. So now I'm gonna try to get that one. There we go. All right, I'm gonna get the other two off and uh, we'll see you on the other side. All right, so if my calculations are correct, I should be able to, I hope, just kind of give this thing a couple light taps. And hopefully it would, the axle will pop off. I might need to get a bigger hammer. Okay, here's what we're gonna try. We got the brake drum on inside out with uh, a couple threads pitched in on the uh, on here, and I'm just gonna try to use a brake drum to pull it out. All right, I'm gonna try the uh, slide hammer I just rented from O'Reilly's and you got to order it in different stages so the initial slide hammer itself 67031 part number and what should fit over this large bulge yeah, mainly does to see how many threads I can get on there but this is uh, 67032 It's going to be close. All right, I think I got enough threads on there. I'm decently happy about that. Okay, so I should just have to just spin her in. Probably want to have as many threads as possible, even though I don't have as many on there as I'd rather like. So I'll just tighten this up. It's probably pretty good. Try it. Oh, I think I got her loose. Yep, she's coming. Man, you know, it really pays to have the right tool. All right, I got an update for you. So, um, you know, as I kind of said before, I'm kind of learning as we go here. And uh, maybe I should have done a little more research. You know, I, actually I really should have done a little more research. So anyway, here's what that looks like uh, with the axle shaft taken out. But, well, I'll show you what I got here first. Here's the axle again. So here's the bearing. Got the outer race, got the, the the bearings themselves, and you got the inner race. I'm not going to be able to just slide that back in there, uh, like like I thought I was going to be able to. Um, 
basically you need to be able to get at this from the from the uh, outside here when you're putting it back on and this hub and the back drum backing plate is going to be in the way well so in order for me to put my locker in like I want to fortunately got to play a little bit by the rules here wasn't able to take a hundred percent shortcut so my new plan that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy a new bearing and my local O'Reilly's has that in stock and they're calling that a set five Timkin set five and I believe uh, what they have in stock is um, so it's uh, what the heck is it a it's an a5 so it's just obviously the same bearing I think it's just a different break I think it's national national brand which I think is still okay but uh, anyway so I got to put in a new bearing because I'm gonna have to cut this off and I think what I can do I think I can just I can just cut this bearing retainer right here and then I, I think I can probably peel it back enough where I can start taking these actual rollers out you know they like keep cutting 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 and then eventually I think I'll get it all the rollers out and then I think I can pull this outer race uh, off the shaft and then I think I should be able to take this back drum backing plate and then finally slide it down but then that leaves me I still have to take this off and from what I'm reading and understanding that takes a tremendous amount of force a very strong hydraulic press uh, possibly greater than 20 tons so I am gonna have to try first of all my friend who uh, manages a local muffler shop and he also has you know he does other work as well he's has a press I'm gonna try to get that nut off for him try to make it easier on us he doesn't have as much work to do um, and, what, and then once that hub is off you know, well, I'm going to have to order a new wheel seal. So the the wheel seal is actually underneath of this. This is a dust cover right here. Let me get my finger right here. Right here, that's a dust cover. The actual wheel seal is underneath of it. So, yeah, you know, this turned out to be, I guess, a little big, bit bigger job than I thought. <laughs> so we're going to have to uh, take this all apart. And I still think I can leave the drum brakes alone. I don't even have to mess with that. Um, so that's still a plus. Uh, anytime you don't have to mess with drum brakes, it's kind of cool. But so that's kind of the game plan here. Unfortunately, things have changed. I had a little bit more work for myself, and um, tell you what, frankly, I'm kind of missing driving my Hornet already. So we got to hurry this process up. So yeah, my plan is I want to get this uh, outer race off, and due to that, I got to cut here, and then after I get that off, I can get the backing plate off. I'm gonna carefully take my axle shaft, I'm gonna put it in my vise here, and I'm gonna heat the crap out of that bolt, and I'm gonna put my Milwaukee on it and see if my Milwaukee will get it. If it can't, then I will try my uh, my air, my air assault ratchet, and uh, we'll see if I can get that off. So, let's try it out, here we go. All right, well that was a little bit of work, but now I should be able to just remove my outer race and I was able to. And now, take this off of there. And pull that up, there's the outer race. And I should be able to remove my backing plate now. 
maybe. There it is. Okay, grabbing some other other stuff with it, I guess. Vacuum plate removed. Here is what's left of the seal. That's definitely got to be replaced. Yeah, that's shot, shot, shot. That's probably most likely all for me when I tried hammering on it. So, don't really have much of a choice. All right, now I'm gonna try to get the, the hub nut off so my buddy can just literally go to town tomorrow and he can just focus on using his press and not trying to get this thing off. Um, I have some confidence. I think I'll get it. Uh, I don't have an acetylene torch, but I do have a butane, or not butane. <laughs> yeah, butane ain't gonna do much. Uh, map gas, I think that'll get it warm enough. Map gas, for whatever I need to do, has always been sufficient, at least, it always has been where I have what for what I've ever done. So, for now, anyway. Okay, why won't you come out of there? Yeah, there we go. Okay, cotter pin out. I'm sure this is a, actually a standard size, but the closest I have is this axle nut, which is actually 33 millimeter, and it's pretty good. I don't think we're gonna have a problem there. So I'm gonna set this uh, on 100%, give her the juice, Louie, and see what happens. She got her. There we go. Smoking. Make sure I don't lose that. Keep that all together. All right, she's all all taken apart. Like I said, I've got to give this to my uh, buddy who's got hopefully an appropriate press and get this uh, scooted off of there. He's gonna take off this inner inner race as well, so we can get that out of the way and put on the new. Uh, new bearing and everything like that. So basically I'm gonna get this back, literally just a shaft with this bearing on it. You know, that's it. I forgot to mention that when you pull, the, it's, the driver's side only has this. Uh, there are shims that go right in here. So you gotta make sure you don't lose your shims. I mean, we're not, make, we're not making any adjustments, you know, as far as any of that stuff, we're putting pretty much all the same stuff back in. I don't see why I have any problem with it, but I'll, I'll still check. That's basically for back and forth movement. Uh, I, I'll, we'll check it when we're done. If we got a lot of movement, we got a problem, but if we don't, I think we'll be fine. All right, so it's the next day. I just got back from town. I picked up my uh, axle shaft from my buddies where he uh, used his press, his powerful press to uh, Press off the hub that was on it, and he pressed off the what was or what was left of the original bearing here, and he uh, pressed on the new bearing. And uh, to be able to put it back in there, we can't have the hub on, so hub is still here. You can see the uh, key is still inside that keyway. So when it comes time to put the hub back on, I'll just tap that out of there with like a screwdriver of sorts. Because uh, we got to put that back on uh, after we put our seal on. Stuff like that back in, back in the car. So, but before we can do any of that axle work, it actually comes time to, well, put in the locker. And uh, we haven't even started on the center section at all, you know, so... What's coming up next is uh, taking out the uh, actual cross shaft and then getting out the gears. And then after that, we can try to assemble our locker. And I'm gonna go over the locker 
um, right here on the table a little bit. Put the camera up on the tripod right there. And I'll kind of explain how we're going to put the locker together. Uh, took me a little bit. I had to read through the installation guide and so forth. But it makes a lot of sense now. So I don't think I'll have a problem getting it in there. And yeah, we'll just go from there. So first thing of business is getting back under there and getting that center section out. And of course it has to be like 85 degrees and 90 some percent humidity. So it's a little stuffy inside the garage. So that just, just makes it even, even funner. All right, let's get at that center section. Here we go. Okay, we're under the car. Got you in a hopefully a good enough position that you can see what I'm doing. Um, I've actually got a video of what you're seeing on my phone in front of me. So if I see something that you might not be able to see, I'll try to get a better close-up of it. So anyway, with the AMC 20 axle, uh, instead of a bolt holding the center section or the center pin in, it's got a roll pin. Let's see if you can see that. Yep, you can see that. That's a roll pin. And that actually has to be driven out with a punch. And uh, I'll get you on the other side here. You can hopefully see that. You drive that out through that hole. Of course, the light is blinding it. Uh, see if I can block some of that light. There you go. So right there you stick a 3 16 punch in about you know six inches long or so that's what I've got here okay here's my punch and a hammer and we're gonna drive that guy out of there hopefully this thing's long enough I'm not even sure if this is gonna be long enough well, I guess we'll find out See, it's starting to move now. Okay, actually, I ran out of room. I don't think my punch is long enough here, unfortunately. It is not. So that kind of sucks. All right, well, I shortened or took some off of my chisel. That's all I can get in there with that. Otherwise, I'd have to take more off. Oh, I think I had just enough. Yep, all right, so oh, there we go. If I would have had to take any more off of this, I wouldn't have had enough room. So, you know when I said six inches? I guess I can't, I can't measure, so. Maybe that's why the girls love me. Anyway, we'll get this guy out. Okay, so there's our center shaft, center pin, and uh, this, we're going to be getting a new one anyway, so we will not be reusing this guy. All right, now I'm going to tilt this back up, and you can see now the gears are starting to come out already, which is what we want. I wish they would keep going. Let's get this. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. He's coming. There we go. Okay, so here's our one guy here and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna keep these the same keep this washer and this gear together and I'm gonna put it in a bag and mark left in case I ever want to put this guy back in so he's a left and unfortunately the right fell back there and he's gonna fall out through the bottom there you go so this guy is my right and his washer is it's almost like a glue suction there's that guy and he's my right. Now in the center here is what's also called a thrust pin. So if you guys can see that, you cannot. It looks like that. This guy, he has to come out. So what I'm gonna do to get him out is I'm gonna move him into the driver. Actually, let's see what, I gotta get it into the Yes, driver's side, because the driver's side axle is not there. Um, on each side, the axle butts up against him. So if I move him over to the driver's side, 
Um, I should be able to get the side gears out now. Okay, I gotta get the driver's side out first, I think. Now, one thing that what was told to me uh, is uh, you want to actually remove the, pa or it says in the instructions you should remove the passenger side axle. And unfortunately, I didn't read that until I removed the driver's side axle. So we're gonna see how well that works out for me. But if it works, well, it works, we'll see. Okay. All right, here's that. And he should also be retaining my thrust washer, or th th I mean thrust pin. Okay, come on now. It's kind of hard to get in here. All right, yep, the thrust pin is inside of it. Oh, there it goes. Nice. All right, so this is something we need to retain. I'm going to have to wipe that dirt off of it now. But uh, that's our thrust pin. And I'm also going to mark him as a left. So that's a left. And you can see he's got his big washer behind him. Okay. So there's that big washer. So it's also important to put them exactly how they came out. So he's together. And he's my left. And then here's my pa or, yeah, passenger of the right. And the passenger still has an axle in it. So... It's actually kind of a little difficult to get on and off there, I notice here. Okay. I kind of see why they say I removed the passenger one instead of the driver, so this one is going to be a little interesting. I hope I can get it in there. So, anyway, there's the passenger, and that's out. Okay, and now we have an empty carrier section. Looks pretty clean. I don't see anything wrong with it. Um... Our center pin, retaining pin is still good and it should be fine just moving around and we'll just pound that back in when we're ready. I don't see any sense of moving it anywhere or anymore. Okay, so with that said, now we can begin uh, talking about the, the locker itself and basically, well, putting it together. And I'll kind of pass along to you the information that I read about how it goes together and hopefully we can jam this in there. All right.